Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome my name is Heather and on this channel I like to walk a very fine line between a shopping addictive makeup monster and a responsible adult with a makeup hobby. Now I really enjoy eyeshadow singles, dual chromes, multi chromes, blush, highlight, lip gloss, basically everything except pressed glitter and today, today we're going to be trying out the new Lunar Beauty Moonshroom collection I think. Let's get into it. So I did go ahead and pick up the whole collection. So I have an eyeshadow palette, I have the face highlighting palette, and then there are three lip glosses. Um, so let's get everything out and we can take a look at it here quick. And then I would like to do an eye look so that we can give this palette a try. So we have the three lip glosses here, which are Ella, Flora, and Soul. Ella has um, like a pink iridescent multi-chrome sparkle in there. Or is it multiple different shades of sparkle? So there's some pink, there's some gold, there's some purple sparkles all in that shade. And then we have Flora, which is a similar set of like pigmented glittery type pieces in it, but on a more like bubblegum pink base. And then Soul is like some orangey tan gold glitters. And then the base is more of like a toffee brown kind of shade. So first we have Ella and then we have Flora here in the middle and then Soul here on the end. Soul was the only thing in the collection that I was kind of like I don't know if I even really need this but when I did the math I think it was gonna be like an extra two or three dollars to get the whole collection compared to just getting the individual pieces I wanted so I figured you know what let's just get the whole thing. Next we'll talk about the Moonshroom highlighter palette and you know I am always suckered in by highlighter palettes, but I know that they're kind of annoying because there's oftentimes shades that you can't use in the palette, which gets really frustrating. So I think for me, you know, this shade is going to be the most important, but the other three could maybe be used as, I won't say eyeshadow because we all know people are not doing that. Um, but potentially blush topper, luminous bronzer, maybe. I might be able to get away with this one if I mix it with that one as a highlighter. Alright, so there are the four highlighters, and you can see they are super blinding, which is absolutely my preference for highlighters. I think the top two sheared out I can work with. This one a blush topper for sure, and this one maybe a bronzer topper, otherwise I don't have a whole lot of use for that one. And then the last thing to take a look at here is of course the most exciting, which is the Moonshroom palette. And the inside of the palette looks like this. You definitely have this kind of like grungy spring hybrid here, which I think is really pretty. And I'm excited to give this whole um, collection a try here. All right, and this is the set of swatches that goes with the eyeshadow palette. Now I did build up the purple and the red because the first swatch that I did, it was a little bit soft. I'm not sure if I just didn't pick up enough at first, so I did build those up, so those have been layered, but the other ones have not. And then I did also layer up, um, what, was there a matte that I like? I don't think so. I think the rest of the shades are just one swipe, or one swatch swiped onto my arm, no primer. And the bone shade is here in case you can't see it, it's basically my skin tone. So I did just go ahead and prime my eyes with the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, um, which is the last primer that I've been trying out before I put my primer video out. Um, and I want to go ahead and start with the palette. I'm super excited for this palette. I'm going to go in with Meadow first, which is kind of this like swampy, pukey green color. definitely looks more yellow on the lid. And I'm going to add a little bit of honeysuckle in the inner corner. That's the bright yellow that's on the top row. I'm going to go in next with Weeping Willow, which is the like deep mossy green on the bottom row. I 
for some reason I'm not a big like neutral person but when there's sort of like these yellowy mustard neutrals I'm more excited to play with them than if they're just like orange orange and brown and then I'll go into the shade death cap which is the deepest brown and pop that out here I'm going to go back into Meadow, which is that pea green that I started with, and just build that up a little bit more. Now we're kind of looking like that, and that is definitely not the direction I thought I was going to go with this palette, but I think a lot of people are going to use the purple, so I wanted to try to use something different. Next I'm going to go in with some of the Specular... Glitter Primer from Davina. And then I'm going to go into Fun Guy, which is this like army green brownish kind of shade. Ooh, that's pretty. And then I'm going to use Fairy Wings just on this like inner corner here to blend together. A bit of puff ball which is the light cream shade and just kind of blend that out above my crease towards my brow bone kind of disguise all these little brow hairs that I should already have had waxed off but have been lazy about rescheduling my appointment not sure where I left off at because my camera battery died on me um, but just to sort of recap what I've done on the upper portion of my look, I have this below my brows, this in the inner corner, this above my crease on the outer corners, this is directly into the crease, and then this is in the outer V. I have this shade predominantly on my lid with this in the innermost corner on the top of the lid, and then the lower lash line is this shade right here, smoked out with that shade. And I think I want to go ahead into the highlighter palette for an inner corner highlight because there's not really a great inner corner highlight in the palette itself, but since I have this, I might as well make use of it. And I'm going to use the shade Tink, which is the second lightest shade here in the palette. And I just went ahead and put a little bit of the Ulta Beauty um, eyeliner in black brown onto my waterline and then a little bit into the outer lash line on my lid. So this is the blush palette that I've been working on this month. I am going to go ahead and use I think a little bit of this shade, maybe some of that shade to do my blush here today. So this is the finished eye look. I think we are finally ready for the highlighter palette. I'm going to go into Sugar because that is the lightest shade here. Oh yeah. Take a little bit of Tink, which is the second lightest shade, and pop that into the other places that I sometimes highlight. And now I think we are ready for some gloss. So against my better judgment, I'm going to go in with Soul because I think it will match this look the best, although I think it's probably my least favorite gloss color. Alright, and so this is the finished look. What do you guys think? Obviously, I went a completely different direction than what I thought I was going to go, um, but I do think this came out really nice. I like the sort of grungy, swampy upper, upper lid shades mixed together, and then the lower lash line, the shades are like cooler and softer, and I think that's a nice um, contrast. 
So in terms of trying to be a responsible shopper, I am also going to show you a couple of palettes in my collection that I think have a similar vibe to this palette. Um, and you can tell me kind of your thoughts as well. Um, but just in case you have some of these, maybe we can talk you out of the new palette or, you know, hold off on purchasing until a sale, that kind of thing. So the one that immediately sprang to my mind first was at Florist, at Forest Sight. We'll hold them like this. So you can definitely see that you have some swampy greens, you have some kind of like tealy blues, you've got that pop of kind of deep purpley plum, you've got those yellowy marigold orangey type shades, and then this one only has two metallics in it, and the metallics are kind of weak sauce. So if you are um, definitely somebody who likes strong, pretty, shiny metallics, I would definitely consider the Lunar Beauty over the At Foresight, which I believe at this point is permanently retired. The next one I thought of was actually NYX Ultimate Utopia, and this palette, although it's huge, has some very similar colors in it. A slightly easier way to hold these, oh my gosh, what a mess. Um, so you've got these sort of deep teals here, you've got the plummy purples that are in here, you've got these kind of like burgundy red shades that are in here, you've got kind of these like swampier greens. Um, you don't have as much of the yellow golds in this particular palette, but you do have some similar metallics that are in here. So I think if you have this one and you like sort of like a moodier, softer eye look, you might be able to get away with this one. But if you want the sort of brighter, punchier colors, I would still consider the Lunar palette for that. And then of course I did also want to reference the original Melt Gemini. Obviously you have those like swampy greens and browns. You have a black in the Gemini shade in the palette, which you do not have in the Lunar Beauty palette. Um, but otherwise I think these are generally, you know, fairly similar for the greens. You miss out of course on the purples, on the teals, on this kind of burgundy purple and red shades here, but some similar, similar thoughts for sure. I did also pull Stone and Rock from Odin's Eye, and I think you have some similar shades here, although this is definitely a tighter color story in the Odin's Eye palette. You miss out on all the purples and burgundies and things like that, and there's no bright punchy yellows, but the swampy greens you have, the metallics you have, and there's definitely some cool tones and warm tones to play with in this palette as well as this palette. Last but not least, I wanted to show you the glamorous, I'm sorry, the nocturnal palette from Glaminatrix Cosmetics, because you have pretty much shade for shade the purple here, you've got the swampy greens that are here, you've got these kind of mustardy yellow brown shades here, you've got this sort of red metallic here, you've got a purple here. This green obviously is way more intense than this green, but similar shades there, you've got the burgundy here. These blues are not featured in this particular palette. The closest thing you have to that blue is like this teal shade, um, and then you have this iridescent shade which doesn't have a similar shade in it. So with the exception of this one, this one, this one, that one, you pretty much have this palette already if you own Nocturnal. In terms of the palette itself, it's the same kind of standard packaging that you've come to expect from Lunar Beauty, and I do like that you get a nice big mirror here. I like the layout of the shades here, and I think the center shades are definitely like a soft, you know, buttery, really um, enjoyable to work with. I like that you have this super deep row here, and although these three shades seem kind of similar, I'm glad that you have that so you can sort of switch up your undertone to sort of match with whatever the metallics are that you're going to be using in that particular eye look. So I do appreciate having some variety there. I like the pop of purple here. I think that's really pretty, although it's very cool toned, so I'm not sure how well it's going to go with everything else that's in the palette. Um, and then again, you got you know, some beautiful light shades here that I think are just different enough that you can sort of justify having these different shades here. So all in all, I'm really excited about this palette. I think it's a really pretty one. I like the cover art as well. Um, and it's going to be another, another Lunar Beauty palette for my collection. As far as the highlighter palette goes, um, I almost wish he had done like individual pans with this like packaging, right? Um, but I think the, the cost would probably have been a lot more than if you had them combined like this. So I don't mind it. I just know I'm not going to get as much use, especially out of these two shades. This one I can justify as a blush topper, and then this would be my ideal shade for a highlight. So all in all, I do think it's pretty. I like the formula. I like how sort of blinding the highlight is. Um, in quality, that's definitely more my jam. So overall, very happy with this one. And then as far as the glosses go, of course, you guys know I love the packaging on these glosses. I like the little, 
the little gemstones that they have in the top of the packaging I think is really pretty. And then you do have sort of a clear window at the base so you can see what color it is you're pulling. I think the clear and pink are probably going to be my two favorites. The brown is not as brown as I was expecting it to be on the face so I'm not like horrendously upset by it but I think when I go for shades I tend to just be drawn more towards these type of shades than the brown. Overall though I think this look came out really really nice. This is something that I definitely would wear to you know work or an event or whatever so you guys are gonna have to let me know in a comment down below. What do you think of the eye look? What do you think of the collection? Did you pick anything up? Are you passing over it? Are you putting it on your wish list? I'm very curious. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!